الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نويت الأربعين نويت العتيكة نويت الخلوة نويت العزرة نويت الإجارة نويت السلوك لله تعالى العظيم في هذا المسجد رحمة الله واسعة Allah's mercy is vast. Wasi'at kulla shay'in fi dunya wal akhirah. It has encompassed everything, everything in dunya and akhirah. That's why everyone that Allah created, as we explained in the previous session, this is continuation of the previous one. that وَرَحْمَةِ وَسِعَاتِ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ His mercy has encompassed everything means nothing will be out of it means whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created is under Allah's mercy. So means there is a mercy on earth which I think the smallest planet, the smallest planet on earth, on a planet in this universe. Every other planet is bigger than the, than the earth. With that, planet that it is the smallest received mercy <coughs> means everything in the universe received mercy and Allah's mercy ha Allah when you say rahmatullah <coughs> ala khalqihi Allah's mercy on his upon his creation, upon his creation. So when we say there must be a creation in order to receive the mercy, since the mercy existing from Azal, from pre-eternal, it's one of the Allah's beautiful names and attributes, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. So His mercy is, is from pre-eternal to post-eternal, never disappearing, means under it falls any creation receives a mercy and that creation that receives mercy must be a creation that it is not like no life in it it has to be living so means as we said in the previous session that there are creations that we don't know that Jibreel alayhi salam was selling Khidr as we mentioned that in this vast desert of crystals there was one tree and one bird coming from up green bird coming from up the tree picking one crystal going up to the trees standing eating it going back down get one other one going up eating it and he said Ya, ya Khidr this is Prophet وسلم, and the symbol of a green bird and these are every crystal is a universe by itself and Prophet has been sent to them as their Prophet and Allah created this creation of crystals <coughs> which every one of it is a universe and Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, is their messenger so it means that Rahmah that Allah is giving covers everything that is created and continuously under creation. Anything appears from the name of Al Khalik, from the Creator, any 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 creation appear, anything in this universe appear has 
mercy manifesting itself on that creation. That's why if you are asked, as we said, from what, since when you are a Muslim, you say, from the day of promises, day of Alastu Rabbikum Karbu Bala, I am a Muslim. When you are in that day, in the presence of Allah, and you declare, Ya Rabbi, you are my Lord, and I am your servant, you are the Creator, and I am your servant, means, from that moment, you became under that mercy. And what is the effect of that mercy is, is the key for faith, for Iman, to be planted into your heart. That's why when souls were in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah asked them, Who am I? And they said, Ya Rabbi, you are our creator. You are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are your servant. From that day, they are mu'min. That iman being granted to them. They came to dunya, they changed that something else. From that day, they be mu'min. And then the question comes. If Allah gives something, He will take it. If a generous person you say, I, I went to a generous person, he gave me something. Even you fight with him, he will never ask you back, give me back my what I gave to you, my gift. He's giving. He doesn't mind you take it and you come against him later. He doesn't mind. Karim, <coughs> The meaning of Karim, the generous, is when he gives, he doesn't take. So what do you think about the one who created generosity? If he gives something, he will take it? Never. So when Allah gave Iman to human being, he will never take it. That light of Iman is in the heart of... 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 Human being. Huh? Why you are... Uh, they want to hear. Of all humans. Uh, all, all humanity. He's sleeping. <laughs> all human. Huh? All human. Huh. So, all human, not, no one been left. That is the hadith of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Human being is born on innocence, means he's born on Iman. Iman. He didn't say, he, he continued the hadith, either his parents make him Jew or Christian or Zoroastrian. He didn't say his parents make him Muslim because he is already being granted that. Yurad al insan ala al fitra ala al iman. So he is on that, that light of guidance, light of Iman is in the heart. And that's why it's true. What some people here in the West, when they speak to them, they say, no, we are not convert. We are? Rivers. Rivers. <laughs> we are rivers. Because we are back to our origin. Which is correct. Correct word. Because Iman is a heavenly grant. When heavenly grant comes, no one can take it back. That is there. But the problem is our characters is blocking it to appear. That's why reverts, they say, don't tell us that we are converts. We were not something else and we came to become different. We were, we, that light of Iman was in our heart. We brought it back. We broke all the obstacles and we brought it back. back. Like when we have a stone, we explained yesterday that you have a stone and you want to get the diamond from it. So what you do? You crack it. You crack it. 
it, you have to crack it or else you cannot get that diamond from inside but the cracking has to be professional not everyone can crack a diamond you have to crack it in certain points and that's why some murids you need to crack them means you need to come against their bad characters and behaviors in order to bring the diamond that it is within them out so those reverts they cracked already these stones that they have been thrown into their hearts and they make like a uh, like a shr sh shrine shroud shroud wrapping. or sh wrap wrapping shroud, yeah. shroud around their uh, that iman in the heart so when you need it what you have to do you have to take the shroud back or cut it with a scissor like uh, like the silk worm what, what, the worm that makes silk what it makes after it become worm worm what it makes butterfly 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 no it make cocoon cocoon, cocoon. it make cocoon sharnaka in arabic what you say in cocoon. cocoon cocoon after that what you need to do to come out has to open it crack it to come out and become what? Butterfly. But what that butterfly doesn't fly, what it does? Lays, lay thousands of eggs. And what happened with the eggs later? Hatches. Huh? They become uh, silkworms. Ah. Not all of you don't know. What is this? Butterfly lays, lays eggs. What happened with the eggs? Hatch. The hatch. What happened from hatching? More butterflies. More worms. More worms. <laughs> <laughs> Simple. <laughs> so when that iman is being, these obstacles around the iman or the shell that we made, the cocoon, around the iman, it's holding it inside. So you need to crack it, comes out, when that Iman comes out, it flourish, not only you, but from its clean, clean uh, from its light, it reflect over lot of people who are around, as if it lays eggs, that Iman lays eggs on everyone, and everyone begin to benefit from these uh, reflections of Iman, and people will begin to change. That's why it's very important that to be diplomat for what you believe in, to carry the flag of what you believe in, not to sit day and night and what you are doing, nothing. No, I asked this morning, what time uh, you are going to work? Say 11. Why 11? Why 11? Yes. If you are doing something for Allah, it doesn't mean you have to go lazy to the work, to be late. This is voluntary worshipness. Your work, you have to do it on time. Or else you'll be responsible in day of judgment that you have stolen time from your work. Your work is how many hours? Eight in the in the Western uh, usual work, but in Tarika is at least sixteen hours. No. no. They keep working, so you have to work eight hours. You are joking. Eight hours. Well, you are not working eight hours. You are wasting two hours or three hours a day. Who is responsible? You are going to be responsible. 
because when they employed you, they told you eight hours. When you are not doing eight hours, and you tell them I am doing my work, means you are cheating. Means you are going to be responsible. So when that Iman comes out, it will shine like a diamond. When you put diamond in a, a prism in a sunlight, it gives many lights. Not one light. So these lights of Iman will be affecting those people who are around, uh, they are around you, like an oasis. Oasis in the middle of the desert. What do you think people are going to do? They want to run and build their tents there in the previous time in order to get benefit of the oasis. So that Iman is a heavenly grant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to those who attended that day when Allah asked Arastu Rabbikum, He said, yes, you are our Lord, Ya Rabbi, Ya Allah. So that Iman is being granted. Some people, that Iman, they are being ordered to promote it because it's all already no cocoon, it's cracked. Some of them has cocoon and they have to crack it out. These are the rivers. There is a cocoon. Who did that cocoon is their parents. Their parents whom they raised them in a different way or wherever they were in an environment or a culture that they have been raised in a different way. So these people are unable to declare it until they crack it out and bring it. But what will happen? They will be double reward. Why double reward? Because Prophet said, al islam yajibu Ma qabla. Islam uh, erases what's before, covers what's before. Islam covers and erases whatever before. So they must be happy that Allah gave them that chance that if they, at age, any age, 20, 25, 30, whatever they come, all what is before is gone. But for us, is not gone. We're going to ask us every smallest detail. For them, it's gone. And I told you the story of that one in, in California, who used to come, 95 years of age. Came first week, second week, attended Zikr with us, Tuhwa. First week, second week, third week, he said, I want to be Muslim. I want to take by hand, become Muslim. I gave him by hand, gave him shahada, and he left. The week after didn't come. Week after didn't come. Walid was, was at that time. We sent someone to check him. They said he died. 95 years of age. What do you think? Allah gave him a chance. But not everyone can get that chance. That's why hurry up. Go back, get your, your light, the light of Iman out of your heart, crack that, that uh, uh, cocoon and bring it out. That one was lucky, 95 years of age. So those who did not crack their cocoon in life, what will happen to them? Those who did not revert, what will happen to them? Iman is there. Because Hadith and Nabi, they are born on faith, on innocence. That innocence is there. So what will happen to them at the moment of death? Because finished, at that moment it's finished. ماذا يجري في ساعة الانتقال من الدنيا بين الله 
وَعَبْدِهِ what happens, at the hour, what, what happens at the hour of death when, when, the, when the servant is, uh, is, moved, is transported to his Lord? What happened? Do we know? Anyone know? Huh? No. We don't know. What we know is that person, when he was created, there was in his heart innocence, Iman. But the environment around him changed his, him, raised him differently. So, but that Iman is there in, inside the cocoon. So what between the Abd and his Lord, we don't know. What will happen? We don't know. He said, then, Iman attract Sa'ada, happiness, like a magnet. So the magnet attract anything metal, but does not attract anything that not metal, huh? No. So if Iman attract happiness, okay? when there is no obstacle or oh, hajis, uh, yeah. fence, barrier. barrier, if you put the magnet here and there is a barrier, cannot get the nail because the barrier is thick. So, but there is no other barrier, put the magnet, nail comes quickly. So, Iman is a magnet for Sa'ada for happiness, it will attract it. But when there is a barrier, cocoon, so the iman is inside the cocoon, the magnet, iman cannot pull it until that cocoon is has to be taken away. So how that cocoon will be taken away, and who will take it away, and if it is going to be taken away, we don't know. Correct? Yes, yes sir. Yes, so the Iman is ready there in the cocoon and has to be pulled out. But cannot. There is a barrier there. If Allah takes that barrier, what will happen? Immediately it is attracted and Sa'ada happiness joins that person. But no one knows. Do you think that the one that, when he was born, before he was born, he was light in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What Allah created first is the light of Muhammad. Then he said, I am, I was a prophet and Adam between clay and water. Then his light was passed to Adam in front of his Adam, in his the forehead. And Allah ordered all angels to make sajda for Adam, for that light. Then he came to dunya and said, Ya Rabbi, my nation, my nation. In dunya he is saying it. At birth he said it. In dunya he is saying it. When he was sick he was saying it. In the grave he is saying it. In judgment day he is saying it. So do you think if a prophet is concerned for one of every, one, every person of his ummah, you don't think he will be there at the moment of death? Let's say, Ya Rabbi, this is from my nation. This is from my ummah. Give them to me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never is the kareem. He gave Prophet Shafa'a, never he is going to pull it out. So take Ya Muhammad, whom you like. If, if today here, if today here, let's say a president, go to where they execute people, someone to be executed, 
and his head they execute how they execute here they give injection yes they tied him and they want to give injection and suddenly president appear and he said to the one who is giving you stop release him anyone can say no 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 one can say no that one will be released what do you think about sultan of sultans that no no sultan in his presence can be except like nothing like even not an ant any huge sultan in dunya cannot be an ant in presence of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if allah wants to send someone to paradise anyone can say no allah say go finish that's why he said our shara sharia wise it is not acceptable to anyone to say that this person died ala ghair al islam on on a on a non muslim other than islam he died we we don't know you cannot judge people what how they died and what kind of religion they died on it's between them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i told you the story of the monks in damascus always grand sheikh used to say there were there are 40 monks mosques uh, monks priest christian priest in one of the big monastery in damascus related to to vatican he used to say that 40 priests came to him to uh, took shahada they revered uh, so i wanted to see uh, one time to see one of them was always thinking 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 and one day sheikh nazim said to me come he didn't tell me he's showing to me showing to me one of them and we went down to the downtown and there is a market which is called closed market completely closed open it's like two miles straight but from top opened closed like in the time of ottoman they built in the time of ottoman and stores on both sides and we were inside that market and one priest is coming they have this kind of turban on their heads it's not turban if you go to middle east you saw that and then he entered into a store so the same store he entered Maulana Sheikh entered and we went we didn't find him as soon as they saw Maulana Sheikh they said Sheikh please come and he opened this room and that priest was waiting for Maulana Sheikh Nazim and he said to me that's one of them they were talking and so on he is a priest if anyone look at him a priest but in reality he is a revert so that teach us not to judge people we have no right to judge anyone Allah created creation, created a human being with his mercy. And he raised them up with his mercy. And he favored them, وَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ And poured on them all kind of happiness and all kind of favors that take them to paradise. This is the reality that Awliya Allah are seeing. That's why he say, everyone, Allah gave him from his mercy something. And he poured for him, on him, from the beauty of paradise. And gave him happiness in dunya and akhirah. He said, because of that, 
then we can exclude, exclude, conclude that since everyone has been given something, then we can conclude that paradise has levels. For those who are worshipping, for those who are half worshipping, for those who are less worshipping, for those who are not worshipping, from Ummatul Nabi, Allah gave them paradise because they believe in Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now, man qala la ilaha illallah, dakhala al-jannah, whoever say la ilaha illallah, dakhala al-jannah. Anyone say la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, you cannot say, even if he did not pray or fast, you cannot say he is not a Muslim. But there are levels in paradise. Is according to the level that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put you. You don't want to be in a level that not with Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Means your, your goal did not, is not accomplished. If you are in the normal paradise like everyone, every day you are eating soup. <laughs> if you are higher, you'll be vegetarian. If you are higher, you will be eating what? Meat. Huh? Meat. No. You will be eating angelic, heavenly food. That is special. Meat, there it's before dunya meat. For there, there is a heavenly food that you never imagined. One bite, one bite, you put in your mouth, it glow. Wherever it is moving in, it's glowing. You know X-ray? You put patient on X-ray and you see that person from that food, you can see all his system. And it is, it is heavenly, <laughs> heavenly done now. Everything is decorated with heavenly touch on your on his system or her system. Whenever you eat one bite, that is the lowest meaning you can speak. Grand Sheikh was describing. He said, if one hur al ain that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give to mu'min in judge, day of judgment, if one of these hur al ain showed her this, this finger, the small finger, one piece of it, it's three pieces here, you see, one piece of it, this whole world will faint from the beauty of her finger and from the smell of her finger. The whole world, they will be drunk with that. They cannot think anymore. He said, in paradise, not one finger you will be given. You will be given complete that you never imagined the beauty that Allah created them with. He said, Jannatul Awam, we are not asking for the common paradise, the first paradise, what we are asking the paradise fi maq'adi sadqin inda maliki muqtadir we want that level, maq'ad sadq heavenly, the, uh, the heaven of firdaus, trustworthy people with prophets sallallahu because he said the normal heaven is like someone coming to a village, he doesn't have a house. So what he does? And the whole village is empty, there is nothing inside, but it is a village. So you are tired, you want to sleep, what you do? Huh? Lay down where? On the tree. On the dirt, on the floor. You see one laying down there, one sleeping there, one 
sitting there. He said, Jannatul Awam compared to other paradises is like that. That everyone homeless, no palace goes there. So you don't want that, he said. You want a paradise that Allah gives you with all its decoration and ornaments from heavenly power. That only be given when your faith is being open and your cocoon is being cracked and that magnet of faith will attract happiness to you. We'll stop here and inshallah we'll continue next time describing that. The, the, the difference between Al Jannah Al Hakikiya or Al Jannah Al Suwariya. The difference between real heaven and the image of heaven. This, next time we speak about the, the real heaven, the Jannah Al Hakikiya, and Al Jannah Al Suwariya, the paradise. The image one, like photocopy, but it is not the real. It's it's a copy of it, but everything is not real as the other one. It's a reflection of the real. So you need the real. You don't like the reflection. We'll explain that next time. Wa min Allahi taufiq. Hurmatil Fatiha.